A few weeks ago, Canon announced interim testing of the 1DX Mark III, but with their hard push of their RF line and little talk about new EF lenses, it begs the question, is this the last of its kind? What's good everybody, my name is Sydney Baker Green. I'm an international photographer, content creator, and cinematographer. Today I really want to make a video, kind of, you know, creating a conversation behind the 1DX Mark III and how this camera may very well be the last of its kind. Recently this past year, we've seen not only Canon, but also Nikon Corporation make the leap over to their mirrorless bodies. And we've seen Canon, one of the leaders in the camera industry, really make a hard push for their new RF line designed specifically for their mirrorless bodies. Now I'm going to preface this video as followed before we get into a fight in the comments section, simply saying that these are rumors, but I want to really look at the track record that these companies are taking and kind of see their de the decisions they're making and really unpack those and see how it could actually be signaling that the life of the DSLR is simply coming to an end. Now, now that I got that disclaimer out of the way, it's no secret that every four years or every Olympic year or the year before the Olympics, Canon comes out with their new 1DX line as their flagship body that they tout at the Olympic Games. With this happening, we haven't really heard a lot or seen a lot about new EF lenses. We did get the 85 1.4 last year, as well as an updated 35 millimeter and a few other lenses from Canon Corporation. However, we've really seen them push hard, not only in their RF line, but in the mirrorless body department. I think it's also important to look at where our society is and this point in time with technology. If we look at things like MacBooks or the Razer Blade Pro, iPhones, Samsung phones, or smartphones in general, we've all wanted smaller yet with the same power. And although these things come with drawbacks, over time, we've been able to advance our engineering to overcome these setbacks. So would it be a surprise for the 1DX Mark III to be the last of its kind, as well as the other Canon camera bodies or Nikon camera bodies that are due for an update? Well, to me, it doesn't seem that far off. And recently, Canon has made a lot of business moves that make no sense when you look at the rest of their line. But what if they discontinued the rest of that line. So one thing that I really love to do is unpack business decisions. And I saw the Canon EOS R and I'm like, wow, that camera has the same exact setbacks as the 5D Mark IV. The only difference in the spec line is that I believe it has a higher megapixel count and it comes standard with Canon Log. But as far as its video modes and shooting modes, everything is the same. And then I saw the EOS RP, and to me, I wasn't really surprised that they crippled that camera to the max because I saw how they did the EOS R, lining it up with the 5D Mark IV. I knew that this year, Canon was supposed to be announcing two more camera bodies that are mirrorless in their EOS R line. One was supposed to be a professional body, which means they would probably likely, or most likely want to make a consumer body. And to me, the EOS RP is a consumer full frame rebel, which honestly makes me happy because that means that we might also be coming to a point where we are eliminating the crop sensor in the camera. Maybe not the crop factor in video yet, but we are eliminating the crop sensor. So now, if you look at their line, get rid of every other single DSLR out there, and let's assume that their EOS RX or their professional EOS R body that they're supposed to come out later this year with, has similar specs or hopefully better specs than the 1D X Mark II or Mark III. And now they have not only a camera for each sector of the market, but now it's also a full frame camera. And with all these hard pushed RF lenses that they're coming out with, as well as their RF to EF adapter, they have a lineup that's not only mirrorless, small, portable, and gives society everything they want, and hopefully, all the specs that they want, but now they also have complete security to get rid of the rest of their DSLR line. But there are also so many advantages to having a mirrorless body like the electronic viewfinder where you know your exposure as you're taking the shot, which is something you don't have with the DSLR. So you're seeing all these positive gains too with the mirrorless line, the DSLR is becoming outdated technology. Plus, what are the common complaints of their most powerful DSLRs like the 1DX Mark II? It's too big. Lugging it around is horrible. I'd rather shoot with the Sony as A7R3. So you see that, you hear that talk, it just makes sense for all companies to start to fall in line with the mirrorless and smaller form factor. 
And I also think from a business standpoint and something we can learn with these companies is the fact that because of the power that they have, the brand name and the brand recognition, they are going to be able to push cameras without the best specs and they're still going to sell. I think that's something we really need to accept in the tech industry unless we stop that as a whole. And I say that because Canon's not the only company that has held back or crippled their products compared to what they could be. Another great example of a company that does that is Apple. You look at their track record for the past few years, actually holding back on their graphic card capabilities and for the most part, also their processor capabilities and their computers still sell like hotcakes because people love something about them. The same way that people love something about Canon's color science, or maybe it's their form factor, their lens choice, they love something about it, so it's okay for them to let go of those specs and take a hit in the performance category based on what it could be. I'm not saying these products don't still perform well, but they don't have as much power as they simply could have but yet people still buy it. And we see that not only with computers like the MacBook Pro, so on and so forth, when newer computers that are on Windows have the NVIDIA 1080 series of graphics cards, but we also see that with iPhones where they are using last year technology that Samsung put out. So, so when you take all that into account and you look at what this company is doing, it's honestly no different than what any other tech company has done. And the important thing to remember is, is that it's easy to complain about these things. It's very easy for us to look at a company and complain about it, but then we also need to examine in our lives, well, are we contributing to this? Are we allowing this company to get away with pushing watered down products? Because it's important to remember that our money is actually the power for these companies. They put out their annual fiscal reports that tell us how they are moving in that direction. And so off the bat, when they release that report, we should be knowing, am I gonna wanna fall in line with this company? Am I gonna wanna support them with our mon my money? Because if I don't, then don't buy from them. Watch them make the changes because they're gonna be like, okay, we didn't make as much money as we did last year. What were our customers saying that they wanted? And did we give them exactly what they wanted? It's that simple. So I think it's important to remember, especially with first year technology coming out, it's easy to have a critical eye, but also look at other parts of your life where you are falling in line with another company and just because you didn't get what you want or you didn't get what you wanted at the price point you wanted it, now you want to complain about it, you really have to be a smart consumer and follow through with your money. So the point of this video was to simply to create a dialogue in the description down below. I think it's important to remember that the topic I wanna to focus on isn't necessarily is Canon doomed because the answer to that is simply no, they're not just a camera company. They do a lot of other things that make them quite a bit of money. And if you look at their profits, they're still making quite a bit of money. The question really is, are we starting to move away from the DSLR permanently? Sony was originally the only one coming out with mirrorless bodies. Now both Canon and Nikon Corporation have both done so, and it's gonna be interesting to see they're pushing very hard with this RF line. I wouldn't be so surprised if the 1DX Mark III and the 6D Mark III and all their other bodies that are due for an update because the Rebel series just got theirs, maybe it might be the last of its kind. And I think it's important to keep in mind that if you decide to buy the next generation of DSLRs over the mirrorless bodies based on what they do and the specs that they come out with, that you might have a camera that is going to be a piece of history as the last DSLR. And I think it's interesting that in about 1998, we came out with the first DSLR that was full frame. I think it was made by Kotex or Kotex. In 2002, we got the 1DS or the 1D might be the 1D, S or 1D, that was the first full frame body by Canon. And now we might be coming to a conclusion in 2019 of the DSLR line in general. Anyway guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, uh, be sure to give me a big thumbs up. Remember, I really wanna hear what you guys have to think about this topic. What do you think is going to be the future for DSLRs? And what do you think that these companies should do moving forward? What would you like to see as far as specs go for cameras, let me know in the comments down below. It's great to generate conversation, but always remember, be respectful, no attacking each other. I will not tolerate that on my platform and I'm just going to start removing comments. I don't have to be like the rest of YouTube that lets that stuff foster. And remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. I come out with content every Wednesday and Sunday, unless I am suffering from like a debilitating disease or something like that, or I caught the flu or Ebola or something like that. 
And also be sure to follow me on my social media. The links are in the description down below. And also follow my YouTube fam. All of their links are in the description down below. I hope you have a great rest of your day, guys. It's so great to see you again. Thank you for the continued support. My channel is growing like crazy. We are almost at 3,000 subscribers and my watch time is going through the roof. So please continue to show love. I always appreciate you. And if you're ever feeling down or lacking creator's block, remember, every day, airplanes take off against the wind. Live, love, laugh, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney Baker Green, and I'll talk to you guys later. Deuces, folks. Ugh. My name is Sydney, and I'll talk to you later. Deuces, folks.